Hello and welcome to this video on the installation of GNU Octave. Octave is a sort of uh, free version of MATLAB to an extent, although maybe some uh, people might disagree with that, but it is largely compatible with MATLAB. Um, where you're going to get it, especially if you're going to be installing it in the Windows environment like I'm going to, uh, is going to be through the Octave uh, website. So you can search GNU Octave into your browser's search engine or into the uh, address bar, whatever you like, or you can even just type octave.org and go directly to the website. So once you have loaded the website, it should look something like this. It may have changed a little bit whenever you watch this video, um, but by and large, it should be pretty similar. Somewhere on the page, um, there will be the download section, which is where we'll go in a minute, but the front of it will show different information about Octave. You can also find additional information here in Abide. You can get support on various problems. So you can even um, contribute to Octave. Um, so uh, as it says here, it's a scientific programming language. It's really built for uh, doing numerical problems. Uh, it also contains some uh, plotting and visualization tools. It runs on uh, most major operating systems, so uh, GNU Linux, uh, Mac OS, BSD, and Microsoft Windows. Uh, so it's drop-in compatible with many MATLAB scripts. So yeah, so it works with, I mean, MATLAB straight out of the box. I think there may be some issues if you're um, trying to uh, use different packages in MATLAB. Maybe some of them don't have an equivalent in Octave or if they do have an equivalent, they might work slightly differently or they might um, have different names, things like that. So anyway, uh, we're talking about downloading and installing GNU Octave. So let's let's download the Octave. Uh, well, it's an installer for Windows. So there's different options. There's source. You can always get that. Uh, it's freely available um, and you can compile it yourself. GNU Linux, it's often distributed via the um, different um, uh, Linux operating system distribution uh, methods. BSD is also available, Mac OS. So Mac OS um, is a little bit more complicated, um, but it can be installed via Homebrew or Mac ports. Um, I've installed it in the past via Homebrew. Um, Microsoft Windows is what we're looking for here. So we, they, they maintain different versions. They have Windows 64, Windows 32, um, and Windows 64 uh, with uh, linear algebra for large data. So typically this is the one that we'll install. Uh, this one is, is if you're doing linear algebra problems with like more than 2 billion elements, but there's not really a lot of need for this for most people. So. Uh, for example, from myself, I just downloaded this one. So it's around about 380 megabytes. Uh, so it's a reasonably small, um, just really kind of depends on how fast your internet connection is. So you would click that, it will download your computer. So I've already downloaded this. So I'm going to go straight over to my um, downloads and um, oh, go over to my downloads. There we go. Okay, so back there. Um, so double click on that. I'm going to do some installation of uh, Octave. This is 7.3.0. Um, again, this process should be fairly similar for most um, versions of Octave. So here's the wizard for installing it. Um, you have to agree, obviously, to the public license. Um, install for anyone using Sure, why not? Um, create desktop shortcut, uh, not really necessary. Uh, register a name, yeah, that's fine. Uh, okay, open blast is fine. Okay, that's fine. All right, so while that's installing, um, it's just sort of like extracting all the files and building it. So the uh, Octave comes with its own graphical user interface with like a, even it has its own editor and stuff like that for the different files. Um, it also has uh, its own command line interface where you can actually sort of um, input the code directly. Um, all right, so while that's going through installation, 
guess we could have a look at some of the syntax examples. So here um, are some syntax examples for Octave. So um, as it says, Octave syntax is largely compatible with MATLAB. Um, MATLAB is, of course, um, closed software. It's commercial software. Um, so GUI mode is typically how a lot of people will use it uh, or as console or invoked as part of a shell script. Uh, so the Octave Wiki is very useful. Um, so here are some examples of vectors and matrices. So uh, if we wanted to create a column vector, we can. So this is B is equal to our vector or, uh, or our matrix. So in this case, we have um, a one column vector uh, where we have the brackets, um, square brackets that kind of donate that we have at a vector or a matrix. And then the semicolons, those uh, indicate that we uh, will break the line. And then we have here A, which is a three by three matrix. So there's three in each row. And then we can, of course, solve the system here where X is equal to A divided by B, uh, four divided by B. Uh, so it would be equivalent to this mathematical operation here. All right, so we're done installing. So um, let me show me the readme. Uh, okay. So yeah, so let's run Octave. So uh, this is the screen that will pop up. The welcome whenever you have uh, first started up. Okay. All right. So this is what I was talking about. This is the GUI for. Octave, so it's got a different file browser over here. It's got the workspace. Um, it's got a command history. It's got the command window here. Down at the bottom, we've got an editor, um, which doesn't want to open. We have variable editors, documentation, and so on. So um, this here, we can like do various different things. Like we can assign variables, like make a equal to one. So a is not equal to one. Um, I can display the, the value of A as being one, then display is just a you know, output, um, whatever value, like I could even um, multiply A by some number to get a new number. So I get B is equal to uh, A times three. So B would be equal to three, sure. Um, then if I multiply, um, I assign a new variable C is equal to A, times B, then, oh, well, I guess C is just the same there. Um, so you can also add things. See, there's a one plus one, sorry. It's two, then I could have, for example, I don't know, two divided by three would be two thirds, so stuff like that. So over here, we've got um, the different variables that I have. Um, so I have A, I have ANTS, I have B, and I have C. Down here, the different commands that I've run. Um, so I can um, double click on these to transfer it to the command window to just run it. Um, I'm quite sure why these aren't working down at the bottom. Um, okay. So this is what's like, because I hadn't clicked new script. So here is where you could create a uh, a .m file, an Octave file. Um, you can use this to create scripts which could calculate different things, um, could manipulate data that you have, could read uh, files, dot files, CSV files, whatever uh, common uh, file formats that might be produced by, for example, um, instrumentation in uh, a research laboratory. And then the data from that could be interpreted by a program like Octave and a script could help a lot in producing that. So let's now that we've kind of shown a little bit how the command window works and stuff like, let's try and make a, I guess, a little um, script that we could uh, use to do some sort of calculation or other. So in this script, we're going to create um, script um, that has input values. Um, maybe not particularly useful, but um, at least it kind of shows how the 
system might work. So um, I'm going to define a function here, which is going to um, do the heavy lifting for us. So it's going to take an input x and it's going to half that value. Um, so uh, this function um, is designed to half a number given as the input. Oh, fine. So that would require us to um, define output as being equal to, um, what's this, uh, 0 0.5 times x. Okay, so then that would be the end of that. So that's relatively simple. So we just type end and that will end our function, um, like so. Uh, then we'll need to save that as the name, name it as something. Um, So just like I can save it even just on my desktop, make a new uh, folder, uh, Octave Scripts, and save this as uh, input, save it, okay. Okay, so then, the next thing that we might want to do is to um, use that for something. So we can actually prompt the user to um, give us something. So uh, input will ask the, uh, the user to supply some sort of, um, some sort of, um, variable, for example. Um, so we can use that just to get that from the uh, give, uh, give um, value to the uh, Okay. Okay, and then we're going to run our function on A, and then we're going to display the value of, right, we're going to assign a variable to the um, half value of A. And then we're going to split just so that the user gets the value back that they want. Right? Okay. Um, so let's save that and try to run it. See if everything works. Uh, what's this? Change director. Let's try it again. Let's go to the command window. Okay, so um, one thing that we need to do here is to initialize our x. Um, so just give it a value of zero or something. Um, because without that, then there's no x inside this function. Actually, what we can also do is put the x inside of the function. Um, just to give it a little tidier, I suppose. Um, okay, so... This should be okay now. Let's check it. See how it goes. Um, okay, no, it needs to be outside. All right. Um, so we'll just initialize x outside, like so. Just give it a value of zero. Why not? Um, let's see if that works. Okay, so. So it's just telling me that the um, function is defined inside the script file. 
Um, so x is equal to zero. It's told me that. So give the value to be halved. So let's say it's four. Gives me the value, the value that is two. Uh, it also displayed out these other two, the a and the b. So if I didn't want that to happen, I can actually stop that from happening. If I put um, a semicolon at the end of each one of these lines, but not that one. I need that one. Um, what should happen in theory is that those will not in fact be shown. Um, Okay, so it's saying that x is undefined, so let's try again. Oh, wait, so I'm going to put 4, and then a is equal to 4, which is the value that we're giving it, and then divided by 2. Um, a different way to have actually done that would have been to um, call a global um, variable, global x, just creates an x variable, which is accessible within the script file and the scope of this script. Um, so save that, run this again. Um, hmm. So uh, value of behalf is four. There we go. Giving me um, the value two that I wanted. Of course, you could write it a little bit more verbose and um, you can have the user be informed that this is in fact their halved variable. Um, okay, so that's just some basic um, GNU Octave stuff. Um, thank you for watching. We'll do some future videos on uh, different parts of the program, different parts of the um, scripting. But by and large, this is the, the GUI that you'll see whenever you use it on Windows. So you've got over here your file browser. It's just the current sort of working directory. You've got your workspace, which includes the different variables that have been assigned. So it gives you a little bit of documentation on those. Uh, you have here your command history, so you can double click those to run those in the command window. And he, over here you have an editor. Um, of course, you don't have to use this editor, but it, it does work quite well. This is it's reasonably good. Um, just place to edit your scripts, especially if they're for uh, Octave. So thanks for watching and uh, please check out the other videos in this series and other series. Thank you. Bye-bye.